uh, 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 you are a Muslim. <laughs> do what, do what, to what extent do you think Islam played a role in this radicalization? You know. Well, Islam is a religion of peace, like with Christianity. And from what I know, uh, Hitler, who has killed millions of people, who is also a Christian, has not. He hasn't derived his uh, genocide and manslaughter for the fact that he didn't pull it out from Christianity. So we should separate the religion from the conduct of individuals and their own interpretation of religion themselves. Uh, people who kill, uh, kidnap, maim, rape people, uh, they, a lot of them try to manipulate religious teachings according to their own thoughts. So they need something to justify their yeah. evil. And uh, Islam happens to be the victim of these people. But unfortunately, uh, like any religion you have, can have a good Muslim and a bad Muslim, good Christian and a bad Christian, good Hindu, bad Hindu, good Buddhist, um, bad Buddhist, and then it is everywhere. Could, could we, <laughs> I, I think this actually originates from the the idea that, uh, let's not just for, talk about uh, the authority who actually decides what, what, the, uh, what the teachings are, what the teachings actually mean. What do you think, uh, uh, could, do, do you think would could actually dispose of of I if ideas can be radicalized like that you know I, I can't I can't I, I don't know if it is intrinsically good to actually say these ideas if these ideas can be interpreted in this way like what is the need for inter- the interpretation could we actually dispose all of it you know and actually live our lives through a rational secular life you know without without the need for without the need for religion i, I get you a muslim but i would like to i like to hear, hear your views on this uh oh bishop Kuka was saying we need a, a secular constitution so to some extent secularism would be the solution to a lot of our problems so do you think we could actually live our lives without without this religious religion well you see the the, the good side of religion is that it has control over you more than the government. Yeah. Uh, because if you don't have religion in our society, you can not imagine the chaos that uh, will have come out of it. For example, many people are being restrained from their evil ways, not for the fear of what the government will do for them, but for the fear that when they die, they don't know where they're going, and they are going to face a fire which they will not escape from it. So the fear of the unseen, the fear of the uncertain, the fear of the invisible uh, controls a human being and restrains him more than the fear of what he can see. People can break the law and uh, get away with it, uh, but one thing you know definitely is that you will die someday and yeah, you are going to go to meet somewhere. <laughs> you find yourself somewhere where you don't know, where you cannot communicate back to people on earth and tell them this is what I have seen and this is how people are treated. Yeah. So so the control of human soul uh, is done by religion, while the control of the physical side of a human being is more or less uh manipulated and restrained by government and laws of, of human law so okay but when you look at the prison statistics and i and I, I will put this on the screen because I, I i check it all the time when you look at the prison statistics of the world you know the areas where you get the least crimes they happen to be the secular states the, when you look at the statistics uh of of atheist in atheist in prison they are below like you know like like they are almost non-existent you know, and religious people often often dominate the prison in uh, the prison system. When you look at uh, countries like uh, the Scandinavian countries, where it is actually dominate the areas like uh, Japan and and China, it gets it gets lesser crimes. You know, so so I I I, I don't think I don't think do you think our laws are based on religious our laws and the way we live live our lives are actually based on religious teachings instead of uh, from a rational rational world you know because when when the world was more religious there was more chaos 
and now that the religion is going is going, there are about 27 percent of of uh, of uh, of uh, uh atheists in the world those who actually declare themselves not to be religious and you get this uh uh religion you know that could actually be a cause for for people say it is a cause for do, doing good things but i don't think it's a cause for doing good things you know people just think it is the reason for doing good things i don't think i'm not religious at all not in not in one bit i i wouldn't kill someone because i happen to find them not to be religious I, or because i'm not religious you know it is it is not it is not because god told me not to kill someone it's because of the empathy you know i can actually know look at someone and say wow if you lose someone if you die you know i won't i don't i will not want to die i won't want to have my dreams broken you know and my and my and my Ambitions torn away by by killing someone, you know, and I, I care about people a lot. Do you think it is based on our teachings of the society? Could we base, like, in the contrast of these countries or other countries, you no? Know, could we base our 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 societies on on laws? Like, when you look at wolves, when you look at bees, you know, colony of bees, you no, know, they go on, they go they go in line. They have their own rules. They have their own law. They have the coin. They have the, the soldier uh, without religion they get their, their societies to be governed without religion and wolves also and 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 if if or other other if share. do you, could we also do the same you know because because that was the goal of the enlightenment that that we will base our reasons and if if in the light of religion i'm very sorry for cutting it if it is in the light of religion we wouldn't we don't have human rights because every religion and every practitioner of it actually stays they are, God actually tells them you, are, you, are, you, the believers, have been placed above every other, every other people. And what the rule of law, what human rights actually claims is that no matter your tribe, no matter your ethnicity, you will be treated the same in 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 the face of the law. So, so do you think we could we could actually amplify that in our society? Because the round table I, I told you about, we will be I'll be talking about this for a very brief of time, you know, for because the pastor, a pastor will also be there, and Bishop Kwa will also be there. About about living a life based on reason because religion also also plays a role in in ethnicity and the ethnic divide in our country that seems like it is never going away. Do you think we can actually do live our lives on on secular secular reasons? You know, what do you derive from religion? All right, well, let me let me be specific on this. If you don't have religion, it's going to be very difficult for. The government to control the people because with religion almost 60 to 70 percent of a human being is being controlled and the next is the government in african setting before the coming of islam and christianity there was idol worship and there were priests and the rulers there have been seen to be both temporal and spiritual leaders. And uh, there are gods you that can cause a human being, and there are idols which you can fear. So in that aspect, even pre-Islamic, pre-Christian Africa, people have been controlled by the belief and fear of the unknown, which is the religion at that time. <clears throat> then... When the colonial masters came, they came with businessmen, came with soldiers, but they couldn't control the people without also coming with Christianity. And as such, Christianity helps in terms of freeing people from idolatry practices and also getting their soul to believe in a God that is one. And then for that human soul and spirit is now being controlled by his just belief. And when Islam too comes to northern part of Nigeria, you can see the Arab traders that came and those Nigerians are, are people who are living within the territory of Nigeria that move and brought Islam there has made life easier. Now, the idea of Magna Carta or oh, um, a document to say this is a universal uh, fundamental rights of citizens or the laws of a country is to harmonize and build a system of laws and principles to which the nation or the state can be run. So by that, it means that 
you can be a Christian, you can be a Muslim, you can be an atheist. Now we have a certain law for which we will now have to conform with. Now, if those laws are in conflict with our own religion, then now the state will assert itself because there must be an authority. This is it. And now you form laws from the nature of people, their tradition, their, 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 their culture, and their ways of life. This is how laws have been made. The laws that will fit into the life of the Western world may not fit into our life. Things they permit and accept as right in their own parts of the country will not be accepted here. But there are things also we share with them as Africans, as black people. So I, I can say this, that um, without religion, it will have simply been chaotic. And that is why when you have laws that governs us all, there is also religious laws that are applicable to people who are within those religions. As a Muslim, uh, I know very well that if I die, there is a specific formula in Sharia legal system where the inheritance I left behind would be shared. Women will be given 50% and the men who are my children have their shares and my wife and my mother there is a formula for everything that has been set. So now there is virtually no crisis when I leave and my will, uh, the what Lord, what the God said, what Allah says in the religion, supersedes what my will says. And there is also a law in Islam that says that if you are indebted to somebody before your the inheritance has been shared, such kind of person must be paid. And also the law has also, Islamic law, Sharia has also made it very clear that if I'm going to marry a wife, this is all that is needed, the dowry and witnesses from my family and her family. So any other thing you are adding is simply for yourself and it is not within the religion. So, so such things, I'm a Muslim, a Muslim houseman and a Muslim Europe and, and a Muslim Ibo or Igala or TV or Idoma or Ibra, Muslims, or Nupes or Guari uh, Muslims, are all uh, enjoyed to respect, observe, and comply with these laws. So in Christianity, it may not be that the way the Igbo Christians share their inheritance may be different from the way the Yorubas share their inheritance and they were even different with Ibibio, Joshua, despite them being Christians. So, so you can see in there are things which we are comfortable that the problems have been solved by the Almighty Himself. <laughs> and as such, there is no need for anybody to okay. start arguing. Okay, it. all right. 